Hi everyone, I am Carrie Biscalonis, founder of Reset Brain and Body, an integrative mental health care practice located in Metro Detroit area. So today is our last Mental Health Mondays uh, with Detroit Moms, and it has been a pleasure speaking to all of you over the last almost year. And I just want to thank you for your attention, your comments, sharing this content. It has been an absolute honor to speak to all of you each week. I want to remind you that if you are looking for resources or ways to reach out to Reset, please just visit our website, um, reach out to us. We have so many things going on and we are here to serve and help in all of the ways. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on um, here in Michigan. It is the second week of school. Kids are adjusting, families are adjusting. Uh, we are in month, what, 20 of the global pandemic of COVID. We're tired, we're adjusting, but it's tough. The world feels heavy, politics feel heavy, and there's still so much fear and divisiveness and conflict and even in our kids' classrooms, there's so much difference of opinions and no one seems to be on the same page and there's not a lot of fact going on. So what does that mean? It means that there are more tensions and people are mad at each other and we're noticing that our neighbors or our playgroup friends we're now finding conflict with or uneasiness with we're feeling less inclined to go to our normal social gatherings or our fitness studio or hug the same person that we would have hugged before because we're questioning their character because of some of the decisions that we see them making or we see their family making or their children representing. This is hard when we're starting to really question our relationships and we're starting to lack to see the human in one another because we're starting to characterize each other by our political decisions, by our public health decisions, and we're not seeing each other in that human way. So I want to talk about something that relates to this in particular, but it's bigger than this. You know, here at Reset, our main vision is that every single person that experiences working with us, encounters working with Reset in some way, establishes a mindful lifestyle. And what does that mean? Well, it means that we're able to be more neighborly. We're able to look at conflict and not react. We're able to still find the, the peace and the love with each other. I know it, finds, it sounds kind of hippy dippy, but, um, Truly, there isn't a different way unless we want to continue to live in a world that is divisive and full of conflict and hate. And I, for one, do not. And I don't want my kids to grow up in that elsewhere. So that is why we have an entire company devoted to this. So you see like, these companies everywhere with meditation and mindfulness being a thing. And there's, there's a reason why this is important. And if you aren't already curious about mindfulness... I want to educate you a little bit more about it here and how this can be the anecdote to the heaviness that you're feeling, the anger that you're feeling, this culture that we're living in right now with cancel culture and wanting to pick apart whenever anyone makes a mistake is just corrosive to our ability to feel at peace and grateful for one another. It makes us just tiptoe around each other, afraid to be vulnerable which is the opposite of connection. Again, no wonder we're in this condition. No wonder we're experiencing so much anxiety, loneliness, and sadness right now. So what do we do about it? I want to follow along with a few steps that I like to take, uh, the basically tenets that we like to talk about for establishing a mindful lifestyle that again allow you to meet the heaviness, the divisiveness, the, the differencing of opinions with more softness and <clears throat> ultimately ease. So first we have to start with awareness. That's number one, awareness. We have to notice what's triggering us, what's making us angry, what's making us sad, what's 
making us reactive and defensive, irritable. What are we fearing? Most often it has to do with fear. Right now, so many people are afraid. We're all afraid. And so much of it lies in the uncertainty. Uncertainty is the biggest fear of all. Not knowing about our own stability, our safety, our success. A global pandemic puts our everyday safety at risk. So even if you're saying, well, I feel fine, I'm safe, I believe in my safety, there's an undercurrent there of anxiety, of fear that we just have to be aware of and how that can drive our tension. And you've, I've, you've heard me talk about so many times that make our water level that much higher. We have to be aware of what's going on within us, around us, that's making us act a certain way and also what's making other people act and behave a certain way. All right, number two, presence. So one of the ways that we can also be aware is dropping into the here and now, recognizing our body, what's going on within my body. Listening to our heartbeat, noticing our breath, using the mind-body connection to get out of the reactive state and into our parasympathetic nervous system, giving it an opportunity to regulate us, to breathe, to slow down so that we can make a decision that's out of judgment and rational decision-making versus reactivity. That's presence. In presence, then, we offer compassion. Number three, compassion. Giving ourselves the compassion that it's okay to feel this way. It's okay that I'm reacting in this moment. I've caught myself. Ideally, I caught myself before I reacted to someone, before I trolled on someone, yelled at someone, before I was mean to myself. But also compassion to others. Compassion to the fact that everyone is doing the best they can, especially right now more than ever in these unprecedentedly uncertain times, everyone is doing the best they can. And the quicker that you embed that as a belief, trust me, the easier your life will be. Everyone is doing the best they can, even you are doing the best they can. And I know that you'll say, but they could be doing better Shouldn't they know better? Or even yourself, I should know better. I should do better. I can do better. Yeah, maybe, absolutely. Everyone can do better. But in this particular moment of time, this is the best that you and those around you can do with the limited information that you have available in that moment or the conflicting information or whatever else has happened to you that day or whatever else happened to that person that day that's making their nervous system unable to regulate or the trauma that has happened to them their entire life that allows them to think a little bit more close-minded. I don't know. We don't know. That's where number four comes in, getting curious. Why? might we be feeling this way? Why might someone else be feeling a particular way? What might someone else be experiencing? Do we ever fully understand where someone else is coming from or how someone else feels or what's going on in their life? No, even those closest to you. We can never fully understand our four-year-old. We can never fully understand our 14-year-old or our 34-year-old husband. So can we just simply choose to get curious and choose empathy? Recognizing that no matter how curious we get, we may never fully understand and that's okay. We just choose empathy. Empathy meaning I don't know what you're experiencing. I don't know exactly what it feels like to be in your shoes, but I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt anyways, that it must be tough. I don't know all the things that have happened to you, but I'm going to offer you compassion anyways. Even though I may not agree with you, 
because I can't fully understand and that's okay. It's okay that I don't fully understand. Number five, appreciation. This is where we find the human in one another. We find the grace in this situation. We find the grace in knowing all the things we can't know and being okay with it. We find the grace and understanding that we're all connected. We're all scared. We're all navigating something called life and trying to figure out how to survive. We're all trying to not be vulnerable in an inherently vulnerable world. Appreciating what we all have in common more than we have different. Number six is resilience. Remember that every time that we start to feel agitated, in pain, that we're suffering, that we're worried, that we feel the heaviness, remembering that there are lessons we can learn from this, there are ways to overcome. There are ways in which we can look at a situation and not be a victim of our circumstances, not be a victim of someone else, remembering that it isn't about blaming someone else either. That the only way to get through something is to literally go through it. We have to feel the feelings. That means we have to do what we've been talking about. We have to be aware. We have to be present. We have to offer compassion. We have to get curious. We have to find appreciation for all the things that we cannot understand and do not know so that we can find resilience each time that something difficult comes up so that we can be at peace. And that's it, that's the end, that's peace. What we're all aiming for is peace. When we respond to life and other people and to ourselves with this approach, our decisions, our behaviors, our thoughts will lead us to be a role model of virtue and values of humanity and empathy of authenticity and connection so no matter how you differ from someone you can see the sameness you can see the human and in that you can find love and you can find peace and then the uncertainty of it all now this is hard and so the first thing again is to kind of check our fear to the side, drop in to love. It all comes back to love. And again, I know some of you might roll your eyes, but can you really argue against it? Truly. If every person were to follow these steps, would the world be a better place? Yeah. Would we make more compassionate, mindful decisions for all of humanity? Yeah. Would we make the world a place where we want to raise our children and we're not so scared of what the future holds? Yes. So even though you might be rolling your eyes, I encourage you to try it. I encourage you to practice these steps, embed the mindful values into your family so that you can start creating ripples of change in your community because that is only the way to do it. We have to lead by example. We can't be on Instagram or on Facebook or in the drop-off line at school scolding and shaming and judging and telling people what to do or how they're wrong. We have to lead by example, and you do that by following these steps. So as my goodbye to all of you for this amazing series that we've had with all of you, I want to say thank you, and I empower you all. And I hope that next time I see you or I meet you in person, we all have noticed that we are living in a more mindful place. Take care.